So our next speaker, um, while he gets set up, I will introduce him. His name is uh, Matsumoto. He is the creator of Ruby. Um, he has not spoken at as many conferences as, as Nathaniel, so, uh, but he's spoken now at nine of them, I guess. Um, we heard him this year at Ruby Kaigi, which was an excellent good time. I'm hoping that some of the things he talked about there he will also talk about now, but you never know with Matt's. So welcome, Mats. Uh, uh. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Uh, yesterday, I had a, we had a the great keynote from Dave Thomas. And uh, we had the, the keynote speak speech from DHH himself. So I, I think you guys uh, get sick of keynotes. <laughs> so <laughs> so I, yeah, the, uh, I'm going to finish it soon, very soon. <laughs> anyway, yeah, but I, th I believe I had some kind of responsibility to give us some, give you something. Uh, so yeah, anyway, I'm going to give you a small keynote. So acknowledgement. So last year we lost Gideku and Wide Lucky Steel. So we, but we love them. So, and uh, why? I, I believe he's, he's alive. He, he is alive. <laughs> so I really want want him to come back again, but anyway. <laughs> Why, if you listen, you know, please come back. <laughs> <laughs> and I love him. <laughs> we love him. <laughs> yeah. You know, how many times he, we mentioned him in the presentations <laughs> in the conference? You know, yes, we love him. So today's menu, and uh, we are going to, uh, this is a 10th annual RubyConf, International Ruby Conference, so it's a special conference. So I'm going to tell you about something about history and the future and the divers diversity. So this is 10th. The Ruby conference was started on, is it, starting on 2001, which is the right after the 9/11, and uh, yeah, it at that time the anth anthrax was very yeah popular. <laughs> 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 uh, at the state of the Florida, so the, the first conference was held in Tampa. So the, if everyone around me in Japan told me, you, you are not going to there, so you, you will die. <laughs> 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 but I was very excited about the first international Ruby conference, so I took, t I took risk <laughs> <laughs> and went there. And, uh, since then, the, in every Ruby conference but one, I gave a keynote. And the first conference was, yeah, as I said, the Tampa, held in Tampa, Florida. And uh, that, the subject of the keynote was a human-oriented programming language. So at that time, virtually no one knows about Ruby. And uh, the, the conference was, I don't know, 30-something people, very small very small people, and uh, I give you, <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, and I myself is a very small person, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, 
so I, I, gave you a, I gave a presentation about the being human-oriented programming language. And well, is the, in a sense of the tooling complete, every language can emulate other language. So, if, so the, in a future-wise, every language could be equivalent. But you know, there should be difference between languages. So what is that? So the, the policy and the philosophy and design is focused on human or machines. That, that was the theme for the 2001. In 2002, the conference was held in Seattle. And uh, the theme was uh, be minor, be cool. And uh, at that time, the movie is very minor. And uh, we, uh, we were very minority. But you know, the cool things happens in very s from very small community or, the for, or from the minority. So even we, are s we were small in numbers, but we can be cool. And uh, we try to be cool since then. And uh, next year, we had a conference uh, in Austin. And uh, I had a keynote for the visions for the future, and uh, how Ruby sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know Ruby is not perfect language, so I try to fix the def defect of the language for years and years. So I give you uh, time uh, ideas. I, I gave a presentation about the ideas to improve Ruby in a here and there. And uh, next year, we had a conference in Chanity, Virginia, and uh, I missed the conference. <laughs> I'm sorry. The <laughs> <laughs> I was sorry. And uh, Brad Cox, uh, who, is, who originally the designed the object C, gave a presentation at that conference. And, uh, and he didn't, t I've heard that he didn't tell anything about object C, but the, the Java and education. But yeah, then the, the, they, they told me that that was a very good keynote there. And uh, at that year, I had a baby. <laughs> so that was the reason. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, six years ago. <laughs> Next year, we had a, a conference in San Diego. and. Uh, yeah, we, I give you similar things and visions for the future and uh, wild and weird ideas. V basically similar things. They're fixing the, the, fixing the bugs and fixing defects of the language and uh, try to improve the language even better. Uh, in Denver, Colorado, the, I talk about the bike shed. <laughs> you know, the de designing the language is very interesting thing. The, I, just attended to the, the session about the uh, Raya, and uh, he said the, the designing compiler or implementing a compiler in the language is not that difficult, but and very interesting. And I hot, wholeheartedly agreed with it. So the, in this talk, I try to encourage you to be a to have an aspect of the language designer. The next year, I gotta, I gotta talk about the language model. What the programming language is very important in the programming field. And uh, in Orlando, I, I, get, uh, I explained about the reason behind Ruby. They're basically similar thing to the, 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 the DHS pr g gave you this morning, but in a poor, poorly organized way. Last year in San Francisco, I talked about the, the zero point a true lang language. The no, no language can fit ev every situation. So no language can fit all, all the situation. But the s there could be a some language that can fit the 80, the, that can fill 80% of the situation from the Pareto principle. So the, the Ruby trying to be that 0.8 true language. 
And uh, this year, New Orleans, I'm going to talk about the future and diversity. Future and diversity. So first, I'm going to talk about the future, which is a uh, Ruby 2.0. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, I talked about the Ruby 2.0 again and again and again. <laughs> so maybe you're, you're sick of it, but I have to, I have to. So yeah, please stand. So Ruby 2.0, yeah, we, we just started the work on Ruby 2.0 finally after releasing Ruby 1.9.2. So this is a little bit more concrete than previous ones. Okay, we are going to have the trace and the method combination and the keyword arguments and namespaces and a few other nifty features in Ruby 2.0, which is comes some some yes in, in sometime in the future. <laughs> <laughs> a trait a trait is a collection of methods used as a simple conceptual model for structuring object-oriented programs uh, from Wikipedia. Uh, what's wrong with modules? We, we already have modules, so what's wrong for them? So it doesn't have conflict detection and conflict resolution, and uh, it, it is weak for tree modification, modification and uh, we ha we they don't have any method combination. So let me explain about that. So name conflict. The if a class and uh, included module has the same a method of same name, so it is conflict. But that could be intentional. <coughs> that could be intentional or accidental. So it is difficult to tell the difference. It is intentional or it is accidental. So. Uh, a little bit, uh, yeah, don't, don't read, feel. <laughs> and if you have the, the module, two modules, which is, has the same attribute address, and uh, in, in a class, we included two, two modules. So if you call that address, if you access the ad address attribute, which is effective, so the inheritance precedence is the Jap uh, which one is the Japanese American, the Japanese American comes in uh, th this way, the Japanese American, Japanese American object kernel. So the Jap address defined in Japanese is, has a pre precedence. But, but it's kind of confusing. So we will introduce the method named mix instead of include. So mix can detect and resolve conflict. So mix injects the current snapshot into the other class and module. So that raise and uh, it raises error when named conflict. So unless you resolve it explicitly. That I mean the, the two module American and Japanese have same attributes named address so if you include them in a single class, so a Japanese, the address attribute defined in Japanese module has the precedence. But if you use mix, the mix detects the, the attribute conflict and raises the error. And uh, if you can resolve the conflict by explicitly renaming it. And, uh, and the modules are very weak to the modif modification afterwards. So in that, in that case, the module M1 has included in class C1 and defined module M2. And uh, then mo uh, include M2 into M1. So even though the M1 has a, a ancestors, the M1 includes M2, the 
C1 don't, doesn't include any M2, just because, you know, at the time of inclusion, the, the in include hier hierarchy is in not, does not include M1, M2, I mean. So this is kind of inconsistent, but, you know, it's kind of, yeah, implementation yeah, reason. So the, the mixed copies attribute, so tree modification afterwards does not affect any time. So officially does not affect. So it's not useful though, but it's consistent at least. <laughs> and uh, to, to, method com to implement some kind of the method combination, the, the rails provide the alias method chain, but it's kind of ugly and fragile to multiple wrapping, and we want to wrap method. So the we uh, asked, uh, discussed with the some other guys, and we will uh, we decided to introduce the, the prepend method. The prepend put the module before the current wrap. So method defined in the class will wrap method of the same names. So the if you define the module foo that has the method foo, and the class bar which has method foo, then prepend foo module before the a class bar, so calling the foo method, the, mo the foo defined in module foo, then uh, foo defined in bar, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so the first foo method wraps the, the other, so you can override, override the method afterwards. And we will finally have the keyword arguments <laughs> pose like this, one to step by two to 20 or something like that. And uh, define in method definition, we can write like this, the step by two, go like this. And uh, it's, it's mere expanded hash argument at the end. This is not special. One I has this syntax for a long time. So it's just, the automatic decomposition is added like this. And namespaces. Uh, the in a, the previous session, the Shugo Maeda, which is from Japan, they presented about the, the class box session. And uh, which is kind of encapsulation the monkey patching. And it, Monkey patching or freedom patching <laughs> is global modification. It's, it's useful and it's powerful, and uh, at the same time, it's dangerous. And uh, if we can restrict the effect of the modification in certain namespace or some certain the package, so we can we can enjoy freedom without r risk of uh, breaking other programs. So it embodies freedom, but not dangerous. So the, there are some features in other languages like named class box, like namespace, or refinement, or whatever. So it's con the concept is like this. So Ruby has open class, so you can mod modify the method afterward. Th in this example, the we define the slash slash to to make it uh, one one divided by two makes the rational. Not but in a new, with a new refinement uh, feature, so you can define a module as a namespace. So refine integer to define, uh, define a, redefine a slash, slash method. So that in, in that namespace, which is the 
the from module to end, the the divide division operation that gives the rationale. But out of the out of out of scope, the one divided by two is integer division, so that which it that it returns zero. And uh, using refinement, you can use uh, you can use the using method to to declare the use of the namespace. So in that in that module, the the division is re redefined. So, and uh, yeah, this is too complex, but it's just a concept. Yeah, you can provide the real private me method using the uh, the refinement. So, the frequent ask ask a question for the yeah I I prepare the questions for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, FAQ is for the future is the uh, when will they be available? This is a ve very great question, and will be too old. When will Ruby 2.0 be? <laughs> Christmas. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> let's talk about diversity. <laughs> I love the, the diversity. The, as the Dave Thomas says, diversity is very important things, and uh, we we need we need diversity to keep keep going. You know, the Steve Jobs the, the criticized the Android that the, it's not free but segmented or fragmented or whatever, and uh, and. Uh, iPhone, yeah, iOS or the the system provided the Apple is integrated. Yeah, great word. <laughs> but still we need diversity. But at the same time, I very sympathize with the, the Steve. You know, the having diversity has a has cost. You know, we divide the effort so we have a lot of implementation so that we can, uh, we, we, our resource, our human resource is divided into Ruby, uh, MRI and Rubinius and JRuby or the MacRuby or something. So we, we ha I have kind of mixed feeling about diversity, but, but I'm true believer of the diversity, so I'm not going to, to reduce them. So even though it, it requires cost. And uh, oh, the Ruby language has a specification and implementation. And uh, we try to make up a specification in human readable way and a machine readable way. So Ruby spec defines the basic the behavior of the uh, Ruby language among the implementation so that the Rubinius, MRI, JRuby uh, all try to conform to the Ruby spec. And uh, at the same time, we try to, to define the human readable the definition of the language, and uh, we are going to submit it to ISO. Yeah, can you believe that? My Ruby language, after 17 years, finally submit to the ISO. And uh, as in for implementation, we have a lot of implementation like a C Ruby, J Ruby, Rubinius, Maglev, uh, uh, dot Iron Ruby or Mac Ruby, uh, Ruboto. Well, we had so many implementations. Yeah, few years back, the Python people uh, criticized us. So Ruby is very complex language, so that. There is no, uh, there could be no other alternative implementation. 
and they had they had the C Python and the I am Python. They had two, and we have so many. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love diversity. <laughs> and then uh, I wanted to fill to fill the niche, like a jQuery for J Java environment and the Mac Ruby for Mac environment. Maglev for Gemstone and Rubot for Android or something like that. So, if there is a niche, so we are we are trying to grow to fill in. So, just because I really really love diversity, I try to add one more <laughs> to embedding. Can you believe that? So it's called right, the newcomer the right way implementation of usable subset of the Ruby language. The target is the embedding, small devices like digital appliance and the application like gaming devices and more. So yeah, it's not the time to for our you know digital TV runs runs in Ruby runs on Ruby, but in a few years, maybe three, four, five years, so the computers, the computers uh, embedded in the digital TV will powerful enough to run Ruby. So we have to prepare it beforehand. So we are working on some companies, some universities, and some. Com uh, some other guys, some some go some government people to raise make up the fund to to start project like. Then uh, it's it's an embeddable <laughs> Ruby. <laughs> Think of Lua. Lua is very popular among embedding. Like a, a lot of games embed embed Lua, or uh, uh, some devices embed Lua, and uh, Lua Lua is a great implementation, but. As a language, especially object-oriented language, it's, yeah. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so the basic principle of the right implementation is the components and the configurable. Components, by components, I mean that the implementation will be a com combination of the components, like a parser, virtual machine, garbage collector, debugger, and cross library, so that we can, if, the device is very small, so we can rip off the parser and eval, so so that so that you know the compiled the intermediate representation and the, the virtual machine combine one to make up a very small executable on a small device, or so we can remove the some of the class libraries to to reduce the size of the the, the program. And by configurable, I mean the configurable to minimal set of features required for na, na, the particular application. So that, you know, in a, basically the embedding system is one now. So, you know, you don't have to have a universal behavior between platforms. So, for example, the no, no file I/O needed for small devices, like, a, yeah, like a if the small, small subject of Ruby runs on the, say, say, Tom Pilot. So it doesn't have any IO, file I.O. So the, by configuring, I mean the, you can choose the size of the, the floating point arithmetic double or float, or the fix size of fixed number could be int or long or long, long. Or you can configure the character encoding to ASCII or UDF-8. And uh, the requirement for the, the, the right implementation is the po it should be portable, and the minimal requirement is under C and C99. And it should run on TCs and real-time OS and the freestanding environment. And it, it should use less memory than, say, C Ruby, MRI, and YARV. And, uh, should focus on latency rather than throughput. So, so in implementation detail, not, not detail, in implementation summary, they, it, it used the register-based virtual machine and 
32-bit word code and uh, floats uh, immu immediate and uh, possibly generational incremental Markham sweep value expression. So you by right, so the right can be easily Im embedded into the, the application like a game or the editors and something and uh, and uh, it could be used for small devices like uh, the, the em embedding environment or say digital TV so actually yeah yeah actually I'm working with a big appliance company in Japan I I don't think I can disclose the name of the company but I believe you know the name of the company. <laughs> <laughs> but very big company. <laughs> and uh, it can be used uh, the concurrent. So, so assign virtual machine for each thread. So it, it could be open up the very interesting possibility for concurrent environment. And uh, in addition, the Professor Tanaka from Kyushu Institute of Technology tried to make up the, the Ruby chip. <laughs> and uh, by Ruby chip, I don't mean the, the, the something like Java chip, the, the chip that r runs the Java bytecode. It's, it's a MIPS like FPGA CPU with a few instructions added that helps method lookup or garbage collection marking. So it, it's not really a Ruby chip, actually, but you know, Marketing requires the term Ruby. <laughs> <laughs> so, FAQ again. <laughs> I don't know, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a part of Japanese government funded two-year two project. So. The we highly expect it to be released before uh, before the the end of the fiscal 20, 2011 year. Uh, that means the March twenty twelve. Yeah, if we if we don't, that that means the project would that the project failed. So I. I try my best to avoid the, the project failure. And uh, will write be open source? Yes, probably under MIT license. Yeah. <laughs> but we need a business model for the satisfied government. <laughs> yeah, just because it's a government funded project. So, we might choose GPL plus commercial window subscription model out of ICLL, but I don't know yet. But anyway, it will be open source in, a, in some way, in, in any way. Uh, will I replace MRI? No, right will not be full featured universal implementation. It will be target to the embedded and uh, configurable in, in the environment. So. For the, for example, the the PC environment, or to to create up uh, the web application, the MRI or JRuby or even Rubinius is suitable. And uh, it is kind of like a domain specific implementation, like Roboto for Android and uh, Write for embedded device, uh, Write for small devices. How about CAPI for for right? Right, we have a very different CAPI from C Ruby, just because you know the C Ruby API is pretty good and very convenient, but not very suitable for the environment like uh, the multi-thread environment or the embedded embedded environment. So. We, we will design and provide a new API, the totally different API. And uh, currently we have no plan to provide a com compatibility layer like the Rubinius does. We will write support M17N, like uh, encoding like in Europe, 
uh, Asia, Japan, China, uh, uh, India, or something. And then, no, you have to configure a single character encoding from ASCII or UTF-8 in compile time. So, no, no, no mod multilingualization. And will write support native threads? No. To use threads, you can use multiple VM for native per thread. Write may support fibers in the future, but currently we have no plan to, to support fiber neither. Does write run faster than Yelp, Jerry, Rubinius, etc.? I don't think so. <laughs> but maybe on some benchmark due to float. Ah, floats are immediate value in write. So, and, uh, so we will try to make it fast, make it fast, like uh, choosing the register-based uh, virtual machine and the packet into the 32 bits. B and uh, maybe on some benchmarks, it runs faster than, Yow, say, Yow. But we are not going to provide the JIT for write or nor some, you know, hackish, hackish technique. Like we have to stick to our C99. So I don't think the the right will be a super fast inter virtual machine, but you know the it w it will have it will it should have the some kind of modest performance uh, considering the devices. Uh, how can how can I contribute to write? Wait until the remit of the open source. We will open it on GitHub. Ooh. And that means I have to learn Git. Write <laughs> <laughs> uh, sounds familiar for some of them. Uh, originally, Write was a code name for the first first Ruby 2.0 virtual machine before Write. In the presentation and a keynote presentation in the, in the conference held in 2003, we presented about the, the, the conceptual is same thing, like a keyword arguments and met method combination and a, well, like a name, selector namespace and a, and a, and a code name right at the, that conference. But year after, we, we gave up the right project. And uh, Yelp, was, y Yelp was, was originally an independent project, but it was so good, so we merged that in instead of write. So I gave up the, the code name write. So when I started the new implementation of the, the small Ruby, and uh, I, the code name was resurrected. So it's coined from Ruby Lite. Uh, do you fr resign from CRuby? <laughs> no, but I have I have spent less time on CRuby recently anyway. So, and uh, I will keep being a maintainer of CRuby, and above all, uh, above it, <laughs> above all, I will keep being active as a creator of the language and a leader of the community. I will. So that I think that's all of my presentation, and uh, I I started making creating r the language design the language Ruby in 1993, 17 years ago, and uh, at that time I expect the Ruby users to l to be less than hundred all over the world, but you know in this room I have. I don't know, 800 people, 700 people, the, and uh, the Ruby users worldwide become, I don't know, maybe close to million. It's incredible, and uh, it's it's amazing, and uh, it's not my effort. You know, if David Thomas were did not find the language named Ruby from from the Far East, and uh, if he he just 
yeah, board with the language, or if he didn't write the the pickaxe words, or if David didn't choose the the Ruby to next language to PHP, if you don't participate in the community, so Ruby is nothing. So I, from from bottom of my heart, I really thank you. <laughs>